there was only one survivor of a shipwreck. And he came up on the shore of a small, uninhabited island. He prayed to God for deliverance. Very fervently, then he thought that he would build himself a little hut from the driftwood. There he would be safe from the weather and have a place for what little possessions he had. And one day he returned to his little hut after searching for food to find his little hut on fire. Blazing and the smoke then they got into the air. He was very hurt and angry. Why, God, have you done this unto me? I've lost everything. Then he heard the next morning a ship coming. He said, maybe they're coming to rescue me. So he said unto the rescuers, how did you know I was here? They said, we saw your smoke signal came to rescue you. It is easy to get discouraged when things are going bad with us. But we shouldn't lose heart because God is always on our side. We need the encouragement from God. And that encouragement is given in His Word. Even in our sickness, whatever trials we may undertake, endure, whatever hardships come our way, amidst all of these, Hardships, God is there. He is working in our lives. In this lesson, I want to encourage you by the scriptures that are taught in the Word of God, how God continually helps us. We need to place our trust and confidence in God. And the next time your little hut burns down, just think it is a blessing in disguise. If that little hut hadn't burned down and the rescuer saw all the smoke, he would not have been rescued. In Romans 8, 28, Paul says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Then we 
mean, notice as the Apostle Paul says this, we know. There was no doubt in his mind. We know that all things work together for good to them who love God, who are called according to his purpose. In Romans 8 and verse 31, If God be for us, who can be against us? If we can realize fully that we are children of God, that we are living for God, and as long as we are doing the will of God, we are going to overcome. We're going to win the race. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Our labor is not in vain in the Lord. In Galatians 6 and verse 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Do we ever become weary in well-doing? We will overcome the appointed time appointed by God. In Philippians 4 and verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The strength that we get from God through Jesus Christ is on our side. He is fighting the battles with us. We need to let Him have His way with us and submit ourselves in obedience to His will. Maintain our trust and confidence in God. In Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6, Let your manner of life be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have, for the Lord hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what men shall do unto me. First Peter 3 and verse 12. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open unto their prayers. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. In First Peter 1, verses 3 through 5. Death will be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Isn't that a wonderful blessing? An inheritance Reserved, provided for us, his children. For all the negative things that we say, that is, we say ourselves, God says with positive things for us.
you say it is impossible. But God says all things are possible with God. In Hebrews, rather Jeremiah 23 and verse 17, O Lord, God, behold, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by Thy great power, stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for Thee. So many times we deal upon we deal upon our limitations. We cannot do this or that. We think God are like we are. But God is all powerful. Is anything too hard for God? In Genesis eighteen Verse 14. When the Lord appeared unto Abraham and Sarah and told them they would have a son, they, they didn't understand how this could be, especially Sarah. And she laughed within herself. And God says, Is anything too hard for God? The great confidence that we are to have in our Creator. You say, I'm too tired. God says, I will give you rest. In that great invitation in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Come unto me, all you that labor, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. In 1 John 5 and verse 3, This is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. In Jeremiah 6 and verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is a good way, and walk therein. God has provided a way for us. We can find rest in His dealings with us. The way of salvation He has revealed to us through His Son. And we can find rest in doing His will. You say, nobody loves me. God says, I love you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In John 13, verse 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you love one another. The love of God is great for us. We need to respond unto His love with love. Obeying Him, this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. You say, I can't go on. 
John says, My grace is sufficient for them. You will recall when the Apostle Paul prayed unto God for three times for his thorn to be removed. Three times. Making he ever thought, God, are you not hearing me? But God answered him and said, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. In Second Corinthians 12 and verse 9, that is when Paul said, or God says, My grace is sufficient for thee. You have enough grace. You have enough of my love to go on, continue, don't give up. You say, I can't figure things out. God says, I will direct your path. In Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct thy paths. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. Trust in the Lord and do good. Do we trust in the Lord and do good? Do we have confidence in the Lord? You say, I can't do it. God says, you can do all things. You can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. In John 15 and verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him slain, will bring me forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Oh, how much we need to depend upon God. Now, people in authority... People in leadership, like the President of the United States, would only humble themselves and realize they could do nothing and be nothing without God. But so many live with the idea, I don't need God. I can paddle my own canoe without me, he says, you can do nothing. You say, I'm not able. God says, I am able. When he taught concerning giving in Second Corinthians nine and verse eight. God is able to make all grace abound for you. That you have an all sufficiency in all things, amount may abound in every good work. In other words, I'm able to bless you if you give properly. And you can have more and more to help and to give. Make all grace abound. Sometimes you say, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. God says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the call according to His purpose. 
1 Corinthians 15 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You say, I can't forgive myself. God says, I forgive you. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. He is faithful and just to forgive us. There, are no, there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 8 and verse 1. You say, I'm afraid. God says, I haven't given you the spirit of fear. I have given you the spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Afraid. Do we trust God? Do we have confidence in God? You say, I'm always worried and frustrated. God says, cast your cares on me. Cast all of your care upon me. He has promised to take care of us. All of those cares. You say, I don't have enough faith. God says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you don't have enough faith, read the Bible more. Study the Bible more. When we began this new series of Bible study in our classes, I started the back of that, in uh, front of that book, and went through reading that, studying those questions, those cards. Back to the beginning of the world, all the way through the Old Testament. My faith increased. I believe in God. Why do I believe in God? Because I can read it in the Word of God. What a great and powerful God He is. And what a loving God He is. I believe in Jesus Christ. Why? Because I can read in the Bible concerning that hero, Jesus Christ Himself. Being our Savior, I believe in the church. Why? Because I can read about the church. Being purchased with the blood of Jesus in the Bible, in the Word of God. If you want more faith, study the Bible. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. In Romans 10, verses 13 through 15, And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon Him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Hearing, believing. Faith cometh by hearing the Word of God. You say, I feel all alone. God says, I will never 
leave you. He will never leave us. I will never forsake you. In Matthew 28 and verse 20, when he commanded the apostles to go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the end of the world. He has promised to be with us to the end of the world, to the end of our lives. In Joshua 1, 5 through 8, that being read in our devotional reading, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I want to be strong and of good courage, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Just as God was with Joshua, chosen to take Moses' place, go in and conquer the land of Canaan. We notice what he says. I will be with thee. I will not forsake thee. I will bless thee. But the word of the Lord had to remain in him not depart from the Word of God. Be obedient to the will of God. Certainly we are faced with trials, hardships, sickness, death in this life. But are we preparing ourselves for those situations and circumstances in life. As Patty and I close out our day each night, praying unto God, prepare us for the changes of life. Whatever those changes may be, we may always remain faithful and be prepared when that hour comes for us to depart this life. For the changes of life, they can be anything. Hardships, sickness, Let God prepare us for these changes in life as they come upon us. Old age, with its pains, discomfort, are we prepared for the changes in life? We certainly not if we turn our backs upon God, if we do not maintain our trust and confidence in God, casting all of our care upon Him, for He careth for us. 
Can you call God your Father? Are you in right relationships with God? You know, when we pray unto God, for God to help us, bless us, we've got to do our part to make that prayer be answered. He will direct our paths if we will only allow Him to do so. Hiding that Word of God in our hearts that we may not sin against God. Treasuring up the truths found in God's Word and living by the Word of God. Being strengthened, growing in the faith day by day. You're not a Christian once you believe in God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Believe in God, repent of your sins, turn your backs upon sin. Maybe you're not a bad person, but just your rebellion, failing to do what He says, is sin. Repent, turn away from wrongdoing. Confess the name of Jesus as the Son of God and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Perhaps you have done this in times past, but you have become discouraged, disordered, fall by the wayside. Repent, confess, and pray. Begin again to do the will of God. Live faithfully. The Christian life is the most beautiful and important life that we can live. Will you come with us to stand and sing?